So I've been using Newsboat as my main RSS feed reader for quite a while now and it is an absolutely fantastic application but I thought why not go and explore some of the alternatives that exist. So today we are looking at another RSS feed reader, this one is called Neox. Now if you compare the two directly, Neox is a much simpler application but it does basically everything you'd possibly want an RSS feed reader to actually do. So using this application is a little bit different to the way that Newsboat works, but it's pretty easy to wrap your head around. So if you press J, that will scroll down and K will scroll up. You can also scroll up and down with the arrow keys as well. However, you can't actually scroll between articles with the arrow keys. So the way you actually scroll between articles, you can't actually scroll up or down to the bottom of the article and that will go to the next one. The way you do it is you press Shift J and Shift K. So when you first open up this application, if you have any feeds in it, Basically, it's automatically going to open up a feed for you and then you can start scrolling straight away, which is a bit different to the way that Newsboat works where you basically have to... I'll just show you what it looks like if you've never used Newsboat. So it shows you just a list of your feeds and then to actually see anything in the feed, you actually have to go into the feed. So it's a slight difference, but it's pretty easy to, I guess, get used to working with. And then you can open up an article to read by pressing enter on it and you can go back by pressing Q. Now, if you press Q when you're like this, it's going to go and quit the application. So the other thing you can do to read an article is by actually pressing O on it, and that will open it up inside of your web browser. So in this case, it's going to take us to the GitHub page for Neox. But let's say we go over to one of the other ones. Let's go to, say, this one in Arch Linux, and let's open up this one here. And that will take us to the Arch Linux subreddit. Now you might notice that sometimes it's going to show some weird error messages on the screen. Those are actually from opening up my web browser. So if you actually go back to the application and then scroll, basically all that's going to go away. I'm not sure why it's actually printing that to the screen. I would just ignore that if I was writing the application myself. So an application like this is pretty useless without some RSS feeds. So there's two ways we can go about loading them in. The first one is by importing an OPML file. And the second one is by just adding feeds into the config. So first up, I'll show you how to actually import stuff into this application. So let's say you're coming from something like Newsboat. Now Newsboat has a dash E option where you can basically export all of the feeds in the application. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save that into a file called, I don't know, feeds.xml. And then what we can do on the Neox side is if we do Neox dash i and then pass in the feeds.xml file basically that's going to load all of the feeds into the application so let's go and run this now and it's going to say nine feeds were imported we're going to have all of my feeds doubled because i'd actually already loaded them in but if i hadn't then obviously there would only be one set of these and like with newsboat if you happen to be leaving this application you can also do neox dash e but this one actually requires a file path so let's just call it i don't know feeds2.xml and then if we less that out, so feeds to, as we're going to see, we have all of the same feeds. Now back to the application for just a moment. So when you actually open it up, it will automatically load up your RSS feeds. But there is one slight problem with this. Firstly, while it's actually loading up the feeds, you can't actually quit out of the application. And if you press Q while it is loading, it will wait until it's done and then automatically quit. So give it a moment and there we go. It's a little bit annoying, just make sure you don't press Q while it's loading and also make sure you don't accidentally open the application up and you have a bunch of feeds. But also with this loading, it only loads up new feeds when you load up the application. So there is no refresh button. I would like to see that added, but it's only a slight issue. So the other way we can add feeds is to be feeds.conf files. Let's go over to the config folder that'll be located in .config and then in a folder called neox. Now this folder and the files within it will be generated when you actually install the application and run it for the first time so you don't have to worry about finding the default configs or anything like that. So if we go into the feeds.conf the way this works is pretty straightforward. Basically, we have a title on the left side of the equal sign here. This title can have spaces in it. I think it can really have any characters in it you want. I haven't tested it with emoji. I don't know if it'll work. Feel free to try it out though. And then after the equal sign, most of this you're just going to ignore. So you can add in a username and a password if for whatever reason the feed you're using has that. But most people are probably just getting their news from public feeds. So you probably can just ignore that. So for example, we have the Arch Linux feed right here. So newest submissions, colon Arch Linux. 
and then basically a link to the Arch Linux new.rss. So let's actually go and add another one. Let's say we want to add something for what's one I know exists. Uh, Gen 2. We'll do Gen 2, sure. And if we change this one here to Gen 2, I'm 99% sure this is a real subreddit. So let's go back to Neox now. And as we're going to see, we now have a Gen 2 feed in here. And yep, we have some stuff being loaded. So this is basically everything from the Gen 2 subreddit. As for the other config file, there's not really that much going on here. So let's go back to the Neox folder. So in this folder here, we're going to be looking for a file called neox.conf. So the first thing we have is the date format. Now, this date format isn't actually explained anywhere in the documentation for this application. But luckily over on the GitHub, they say where the format is actually from. So in this case, it's making use of the C++ put time format. So basically, just dig through this and find basically how you want to format the date. It's pretty straightforward. Anything you want to use is started with a percent sign. So let's say we wanted the full weekday name. You do percent capital A. But I don't really have any reason to change this. I think it's perfectly fine as what it is. Now, if you also want to change the locale for the application from whatever your system default is, that can be done with this option right here. For whatever reason, they decide to default it to DE. What is that? Dutch of some sort. Someone correct me. I've no idea what this locale is, but I've got mine set to ENAU. Now the open command it uses is XDG open by default. So that's basically how it's going to look for your web browser. But if you want to specify a web browser in here, so let's say you wanted to use, I don't know, Firefox or something like that. If we go back to Neox now, it should open up the article inside of Firefox. As we can see, that works perfectly fine. It's probably fine to keep it on XDG open though, because if you update your default web browser, you probably want your RSS feed reader to update along with that. And the last thing you can do is change how the articles are actually rendered. So basically what this is doing right here is taking the output of this command right here. So w3m-dump-t text slash html, basically running w3m on the article and then just dumping out the html and then just displaying it in here so if you want to use something different to that basically you would go and set the render text command so for example if you wanted to change it to something like elinks or maybe you want to write your own handler for the articles that's how you'd actually go and set that so that's pretty much all the functionality but there are some issues i do want to mention so one of them being the way that it handles resizing so let's just start at this size right here and then actually zoom in while we have the application open. As you can see, it's completely broken. And if we zoom back out, it does fix itself. But one of the interesting things to note is the fact that it actually does work at that size. So let's go and actually reopen another terminal, zoom in a bunch, and open up Neox like this. That's working just fine. So it seems to just be a resizing problem while the application is actually open. Now, by relying on something like W3M to do its article rendering, it does take away some of the work from the developers, but it also means that you are going to lose out on some of the RSS information. So for example, let's open up one of the Reddit articles here. And as we'll notice, we just have basically the text of the article. But if you go and open up an article inside of Newsboats, let's say this one right here. As you're going to notice, there's some extra links in here as well. So let's go to one that actually has links in the actual post itself. So this one right here, all of the links in the actual article are included down the bottom. So unless you go and write your own handler for this, basically you're going to lose out on all of that information. Also, unlike most RSS feed readers, it doesn't have a way to do any sort of grouping of feeds. So if you say want to have all your Reddit feeds in a folder or have them all tagged as Reddit feeds, there's no way to actually do this. Basically, if you have feeds in here, it's going to be a big long list of feeds, and that's basically all you get. Now, Newsboat approaches it through the tagging system, and I don't really make that much use of it, but if it's something that you do want to use yourself, then this probably isn't the RSS feed reader for you. And this next problem is only an issue because it's shown in the GitHub. So if we go over to that page, as you're going to notice, there are two different color schemes actually shown off for the application, but there's no way to actually configure that. So unless this is showing the application running in a green and black terminal, I don't know why this screenshot's actually here. From my perspective, it sort of looks like there was going to be a way to configure the color scheme, but it just never got added into the actual release version of it. And the last issue we have is sort of just an issue for me. Now, 
You guys probably know that most of my video ideas come from places like Reddit and come from various news websites and most of this information I get from using an RSS feed reader because I know that if I go to Reddit, I'm going to get very, very distracted and get nothing done. Now, I'm also very lazy, as you can probably notice by the fact that there's 1200 unread articles in this feed right here. So, sometimes I'll forget to read stuff for three or four weeks, and I can't do that with Neox, because every time you open up Neox, if you have more than the maximum number of articles for that feed, so in most cases that seems to be 25 at least for Reddit, basically it goes and deletes all of the old stuff. So. I simply cannot use Neox because I don't want to just be reading articles every single day. Now, I know that I had a lot of issues with it, but most of those issues were very, very minor issues. And that last one isn't going to affect most people. Most people probably don't care about reading news from a couple of weeks ago. It doesn't really matter to them. So if you just want a very, very basic terminal RSS feed reader, and you don't care about all of the extra stuff that Newsboat can do, Neox might actually be a pretty good choice to use. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Corbinian, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Montezar, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Peter, D. Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikel, Nate Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there's links down below to my Libra pay, Patreon, subscribe, to all of that sort of stuff. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. It's not really a tech podcast, but it's available basically anywhere you can listen to podcasts. I've also got this channel available on Library, Odyssey, BitChute, and other places like that if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.